Hey guys, it's Spazman1357 down here, and today we're going to be working on weathering this SP 40 foot boxcar. So I'll show you all the techniques I normally use on weathering. I know you guys have a lot of questions on how I do my stuff, so this video should explain it all. As you can probably see, this is a pretty detailed model. It's an earlier kit, probably from the, um, the 70s or 80s probably. It's pretty detailed. I got a train show recently, so I thought I might as well weather it, and I'll make a video. I took the doors off, uh, the doors off it already, because I have to weather it separately. Put um, inner mountain metal wheels on there and KD couplers. That's what I have on everything: metal wheels and couplers. So it's a pretty detailed kit that I got for a great price of five dollars. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to get the model on a soft surface that won't mess up any of the detail. And this is a um, locomotive or car cradle that I made. I'm going to have a video after this on how to make one of these in my new workshop tip series. So you can see how to make one of these very easily. Anyways, let's get back to the model. What we're going to be doing, if I can find my knife. Here we go. Um, we're going to be unscrewing the trucks right here and here. You may have flathead screwdriver or Phillips head screwdriver, but I'm just gonna unscrew the trucks, take the trucks off. If there's any washers underneath there, make sure to keep on or make sure to keep those washers because you're gonna want to have those later. And I have the doors right here. So just take the trucks off and we'll continue. Alright, so I got the trucks off and here are the trucks with the metal wheels on there. If you want to put metal wheels on, you just simply put one end in the socket. It won't focus, will it? But then you just simply put it in there. Really easy. The inner mountain metal wheels are my favorite. They roll very nicely. So now we'll get to the um, truck weathering. I always do my trucks first. What we're going to need for this project, either um, a sort of grimy black like a grayish black or a dark brown like railroad tie brown. Gonna need one of those two colors. In this case I'm gonna be using both, one for the wheels and one for the trucks. Alright, so here we have one of our trucks. We're gonna do the same exact thing to the other truck, but we're gonna get our railroad tie brown color right here and get a somewhat small brush in this case. This is a 10-0, not sure if you can see that. And what you're going to do, you're just going to paint the insides of the wheels. The lighting is actually pretty bad here. Let me move that light. There we go. Just going to paint the insides of the wheels. You can see it's already painted, but I'm just going to do it again for example purposes. So we can just do that, and then we'll continue in a second. Okay, so now, as you can see, I have the um, paint on the backs and the fronts of the wheels. If the axles are black, I don't paint the axles just because I like them black. They are glossy, but I really don't care. So, now we're going to work on the um, trucks themselves. We're going to be painting the sides with a light misting of grimy black, and we'll continue in a second. So what we're going to do now is just paint the truck with the light misting, like I said before. Oops, hit the tripod. <laughs> just to cover up the glossy black. Nothing that special, make sure you get on top here. If you can, don't hit the truck like I just did. Get some black paint on it, it'll look kind of awkward. So when you're done painting that up, you can do the other side and do it to the other truck if you want also. So when you got to a point like this where the majority is black, this will focus. Come on. I guess not. Anyways, when you get it black like that, then you can let it dry for a while. After that, we will be adding a little bit more, I could say, detail painting. So now you show something like this once it's dry. Now what we're going to do is take a medium brown um, powder, pastel powder, or powder pastel, whatever, and we're going to just lightly brush the um, outside of the truck here. We're going to take the wheels off and just brush the truck. Oops, there we go. Alright, so here's our truck, and we're going to take 
our brush right here and just lightly go on the outside. And you can do this to all three other trucks as well. Alright, so now you're left with something like this. This is how I do all my weathering on my trucks, and it turns out pretty good in my opinion. It's not glossy or anything like from the factory, it's not too weathered, it's just about right. So now we're going to, we're going to get to the actual car itself. Okay, here we got our car, and we're going to start here by taking some very fine sandpaper, in this case 150 grit. You're going to want to break off a small piece and just um, rub down all the decals on here. And you should get something like this when it's finished. You can tell that it's a little bit faded down, so it comes out a lot better. Here's another shot of it. As you can tell, the paint is kind of faded on, faded on as well, but we're going to fix that in a minute. So now we're going to fade down the car. We're going to use a white paint and water mix. And we're going to use a bigger brush like that. And just go down the car lightly. Basically like dry brushing, but it's going to be a little bit more watery. I'm not sure if you can tell here, but there's a difference in the paint. After you apply the um, wash on there, it gives it basically an outer coat for the powders and other paint to grab onto. And it fades down the lettering a little bit more, just to give it that better look, like a sun-faded kind of look. Okay, now we're left with something like this. What we're going to do next is use our same brush that we just used, and just apply some brown rust streaks going down the sides. Okay, now I put the brown streaks on here, as you can probably see, and it came out pretty good. You can see on the bottom a little bit there. Now, I guess you could keep it like this. It wouldn't look that good, but you could keep it like this, and I guess it would be relatively good. But we're going to finish up this side, and then we're going to work on the top and possibly the ends. The ends are basically the same exact thing as the sides. The roof is a little bit different, though. So let's continue on here. What we're going to be doing is applying a black oil paint. It's not um, standard acrylic paint, it's actual oil paint. It's ivory black. It's going to be dabbing a little piece on there and just taking a brush and just stroking it down. Just like moving the paint down. The reason that we're using oil paint in this instance is because if you put acrylic onto plastic it'll dry almost immediately. So we're just going to use oil which takes a lot longer to dry. Um, it is The, the fumes on it are very smelly so Make sure not to get them by your eyes or anything, because it is pretty bad. So we're just going to take a small brush, dab some on, and then whisk it right down. Okay, so there's the area we're going to be applying to. Take our brush, you can see it right here. Put a little dab on. And take a bigger brush, such as this guy, and just gently bring it down. Like that. Alright, so there we go. Now you may be saying, yeah, this looks pretty bad. What we're going to do is fade it down a little bit and then put um, brown acrylic paint on top of that. It will soak into the oil paint and make it look a lot better. Um, this is called bullet hole weathering kind of because it kind of looks like rusted bullet holes. So we're just going to do that. We're going to use a um, scotch pad. Or sandpaper actually. Just a tiny bit of sandpaper, just super lightly go over that and then put some brown paint on top of it. Okay, so as you can see, I faded down the um, black spots a whole bunch. Looks pretty good. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to use the same powder that we use for the trucks and just um, put a super light coating of powder over this thing. Okay, so here is our finished side with the powder on it. It came out pretty good, I like this car. Now we're just going to do the um, top, the entire top, and um, 
you can probably just paint the inside there brown to make it look like wood. So basically went from this to this. So now just, we're just going to work on the top. So essentially on top here, we're going to be doing the same exact thing as we did on the sides. We're going to start off with, instead of a fade, we're just going to start off with the sandpaper and it's just a very light coat of sandpaper. And now we're going to start with the um, rust streaks going outside. So if you can see there, I applied a light brown and a dark brown to the roof. And now like we, like we did to the side, I'm just going to do that, um, that dot weathering or whatever it is. So I'll just do that to it and then we'll work on the sides. So right here is our roof. You can see the um, black streaks going on here from the bullet hole weathering. And now what we're going to do is work on the ends. I'm not going to really show you how to because on the ends, all you're going to do is the same exact thing that you did on the sides. It's just the same exact thing. So just do that and you should be done. Alright, so now I got the basic model finished. Got the top done. Sides done, ends done. Alright, so I'm just going to finish up the doors here. The same exact technique. I'm not going to put any of the bullet hole weathering in it. but And then I'll install the doors and screw the um, trucks back in. And then we'll have a finished model. And I'll show the model and some pictures of it once I finish it. So here's the model with the finished doors. They came out pretty good. They have really nice rust detailing on them, if that will focus. <laughs> Never focuses for me. Anyways, here's the other one. I almost dropped it there. And they do still open. I had to reattach the doors because they got broken off earlier. And they do still move. So it's pretty cool. And now I'm going to put the trucks back on and we'll see it run. Alright, so there's our completed model with the trucks and everything. With the new Intermountain wheels, it rolls super good. And you know it'll be um, really reliable because of the KD couplers on it and everything. So it came out really nice. In fact, it's trying to roll down downhill right now. There's a little shot of that. I'm not sure why that didn't come out like the other ones did. The roof came out really good. And so did the ends. I'll take a couple close-up photos so you can see the um, detailed weathering. It's another shot. Alright, so that concludes this video. And I hope you learned something. And I'll let you off with a run-by and some more photos. So thanks for watching. We could get old and talk at the same time when we tell stories If we let go, impossible names rhyme in elegant poetry But I dabble in everything, it inundates my small town I refuse the offers extended, waiting for God now I've never asked for nothing audible